welcome everyone to this week's Facebook Live. And it's a little bit different today. I've been mixing things up, you may have noticed, because, you know, things can get a little boring and you don't always need to hear from me all the time. So we've been having guests and um, different things. Um, so today we're mixing up again a little bit. I'm going to be showing you some ideas for um, how to decorate uh, craft text. Um, I think I did this a while ago, maybe six months ago, and I showed you um, that there are lots of different uh, mediums that you can use on craft text, but it's just not my strong suit. So I have some really amazing examples from our handmade book club members of ways to decorate craft text. And what got me thinking about this, so I'm going to invite you inside my head to understand my thought process, was that I was looking at the um, books I am making for our Retreat at the Beach, which is coming up um, next month. I have them right here. And um, I was talking with Elaine and she said, are we going to decorate the covers? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm going to leave that up to everybody else to decorate their covers. So it kind of got me thinking like covers are not my strong suit. So in, so in the bindings is what I do best. Um, so it just kind of got me thinking. So I have Elaine to thank for that. I'm going to share with you some ideas from our Handmade Book Club members on what to do with craft text. So craft text is a paper fabric and um, that we do have a blog post about this, Mickey. I'm not sure I sent this to you. <laughs> we have a blog post which gives you tips on using craft text and handmade books um, if you are new to this material. So I'm sure Mickey will pop that into the comments for me if I ask her really, really nicely. Um, but it's a paper fabric that you literally cannot be torn. Um, so it's really, really tough and strong. And what I discovered um, earlier this year is it takes like every single medium known to man like it takes acrylic paint, it takes watercolors, it takes pencil, it takes um, uh, like a crayon, like um, pastels. This stuff takes everything. Um, you can eco print on it, you name it, you can do it. Um, but what I noticed in the Handmade Book Club is that folks are posting some really good ideas and really interesting ways to decorate them. So I'm not gonna claim these ideas for myself. Um, I wanted to share their work with you and um, I asked them to give a little explanation and they very kindly included like a long explanation. So what we're going to do is um, do a big blog post with um, more detailed explanations of how they created these. But I'm just going to give you a few little pointers, as it were. So um, I'm just going to give you a few little details and then... Um, we will do a more in-depth blog post about um, how each person created them. So starting out, simple but extremely elegant, um, we have Daria who um, has done really nice cutouts on her uh, covers. So you can see she's cut out the petals on the flower and then the center and then she's backed it with paper. Let me um, scroll down so you can see hopefully right there she used a, a pre-washed craft text so that it comes either washed which is um, kind of slightly crinkled or unwashed which is smooth and she cut out the um, shapes and then she put um, she backed them with paper so a yellow and black paper to um, fill in the design so you imagine like you could do really you could do die cuts with this. Um, she really likes these X-Acto blades. So I don't know if you want to um, make some quick notes while I'm chatting. Hopefully, you're, if you're driving, do not make notes. Just watch a recording. Um, we don't have links to these, but um, she really likes, um, for detailed areas, this is something called an X-Acto executive retractable blade, which apparently is very, very fine. So I could see how you could do some really interesting cutouts uh, with a craft text cover because it's so stiff, um, not stiff, so it, because it's so durable, um, you won't get any tearing. So um, yeah, think about how you could do some interesting cutouts in your cover, um, both front and back and even in the spine as well. Um, just so you know, she used the rope stitch, which is a Keith Smith stitch from his volume two book and which many of you are um, fans of, I know. And she used a three-ply wax linen thread, which was from Royal Wood Limited. And we will pop a link into that. So that's Daria's cutouts. Daria also really likes to um, put stitching that matches the spine on her uh, covers. So you can see here she echoed the zigzag stitch, which was on the spine, on the cover. 
And if you look at that little closure right there, um, you can see she wrapped around some like variegated pearl cotton um, around the closure there, which looks really cool. So um, that's another, so, so this doesn't even use any mediums like paint or anything. This is just um, cutouts and stitching. And then you can see here, Daria did on some unwashed um, dark brown chocolate craft text. Um, I don't think she did any surface treatment. I just think that the, there's maybe um, some light on it. So it is a dark brown, but she repeated the stitch pattern, which was on the spine. She repeated the stitch pattern um, on the, uh, the side flap, sort of cover flap. Um, and she used, again, three-ply wax linen thread from Royal Wood and a cute little bead to close it up. So you do not even have to have any special mediums or paints or pencils. Um, when you're sewing your book, you could just uh, repeat the pattern somehow on the cover or do cutouts like Daria did. Um, another, let me just, I'm just gonna check to see if there's questions. Good, where'd you purchase craft text? Oh, craft text can be purchased um, from c &T Publishing directly sure Mickey will pop a link in. Um, you can also get it from Amazon and you can also get it from some art supply stores as well. So the next person, oh, so Daria, um, you can find her on Instagram. So if you're interested in looking up Daria's work, which is wonderful, um, it's Daria Wilbur MX. And um, Mickey will put a link to her Instagram in the chat as well. But if you want to jot that down, that's Daria's Instagram. Next up is uh, club member Jenna McGee. So Jenna used um, colored pencils on her cover and I believe a uh, white gel pen. So um, she got this really nice sort of um, shading with colored uh, Prismacolor pencils. And she also used, um, she glued on little watch parts. So here's some more of her, she did, this is on the inside, she did some more colored pencil on the inside. And then you can see uh, see it here on the right. So she used an unwashed um, craft text, so it was nice and smooth. So you might wanna keep that in mind if you wanna try using colored pencils, the smooth um, surface might be a better choice, though I'd be curious to see what the colored pencils look like on, on the washed, which is slightly kind of textured. She did use a white gel pen. She used contact cement. Um, but I'm not sure you could also use a Gorilla Glue or a Super Glue to add on those fun watch parts. And um, this was a chain link binding. And she also really likes to use Royal Wood for her wax linen thread. And I'm sure that we, if you do not know Royal Wood Limited, um, it's a great supplier of wax linen thread if you want to buy um, whole rolls of it or spools. So that is Jenna's book, and I love the um, color pencils. This is where you can find Jenna on Instagram at uniquely.jenna. And we will, of course, add, pop that in, but feel free to write that down if you would like to. Next person, so talking of, um, so Joe asks, is the craft text lined? No, nope, you generally don't line it. However, in Laurel's case, she did line it. Laurel lined, so Laurel, Laurel <laughs> is a Zentangle teacher, um, just like Elaine, and she lined hers with fabric, which looks really nice. You can see in the top right. Um, and um, But it's certainly not necessary. Um, I rarely line mine, um, but you certainly can. But it would, um, it would add a little more weight, I would think, to the cover, and it, but it would also be nice and decorative and give a nice feel. So um, this is Laurel's. She used um, pen, she used Micron and uh, white and gold gel pens to create um, this nice pattern and the lettering, which spells create. You come down here, you can see it a little bit closer. She used a smooth craft tech, so the unwashed, which I imagine um, allowed her to get more detail with the black Micron pen uh, that she used. And the, like I said, the white and gold um, jelly roll pens. Um, they they came out great. I really, it's really uh, vibrant. Um, as I said, the lining is quilting cotton. It's a chain link stitch, which was our book club um, binding this month. Well, last month actually. And again, she used a wax linen thread like everyone else, and um, she did watercolor paper signatures. So that is Laurel's um, 
creation and I absolutely love it. It's something I would really like to try myself, I have to say. Let me pop up Laurel's um, Instagram and I'll check for any questions. Oh, Jenna didn't use royal wood. I beg your pardon, Jenna. Um, if you have a, um, Jenna, if you have a supplier of wax linen thread that you really like, feel free to pop that in the, the comments because people are always wanting to know. Okay, so that's Laurel. Who is next? So Laurie Taylor Gregg. I have included this one, although um, it's not a very common um, way to decorate covers just because um, I think you need some specialized equipment. Um, so it's like a sublimation um, image transfer technique, which uses heat. So it is similar to the way that you add images to t-shirts or to mugs. So it has to have like um, some kind of polyester in it or some sort of um, man-made fiber. So that's why Craftex works well for this. And um, this is Laurie's artwork, which she then transferred to the Craftex. You can see here on the, um, the opened journals. So this was her um, artwork, which probably looks like it was paint or jelly print, which she scanned and then used this um, sublimation technique. So I have included some details here, but if you are interested in this technique, feel free to reach out to Laurie. I'll give you her Instagram in a minute to um, get more details. She used a wide uh, format printer um, and a heat press, um, and this dye sublimation ink. Apparently you can do it with a Cricut as well, but please don't ask me how. Um, but if you are interested in learning about this, um, here is her Instagram, Village Press Print Studio, and I'm sure she'd be happy to, um, to chat with you and um, tell you how she did it. The next one is Mary Ann Miller. Um, where's Mary Ann Miller? So Mary Ann does marbling. So I know this will be, an, uh, be of interest to many of you. Um, she marbles directly on her craft text. And um, let me tell you how she does it. Because it she, she does a regular bath of carrageenan, like um, most of us do. So that's like the um, powdered seaweed that we make that sort of um, almost like, not it's not jelly, but that thick sort of... Um, what do you want to call it? Bath. You make a bath of, you mix the carrageenan with uh, water to make this kind of um, thick, viscous liquid, which you then sprinkle paints on. And she uses um, golden high flow acrylics, which I've never used before, but um, for marbling. So she uses golden high flow acrylics. She prints on pre washed craft eggs and she rubs um, alum which has been dissolved in water onto her craft text before she does the um, marbling. So normally you would, well, when I do marbling, I spray my paper with alum and water mixed together and then I allow it to dry and then I print on it. Um, so I'm guessing it's exactly the same process. You would um, either paint it on or spritz it from a spray bottle onto your craft text, allow it to dry and it, it dries pretty quick and then just lay it on top of your um, marbling bath when you're done. But that um, is pretty cool, I would say, and something that um, is probably within reach of a lot of people. This is where, to, so she does not have an Instagram, but you can find her on Etsy at Blue Vars Books. And um, you can also reach out to her in the Handmade Book Club Facebook group as well. So that's Mary Ann Miller. But yeah, that's, that has a lot of possibilities. And I would have assumed that it would have been on flat craft text, you know, the unwashed. But she did it on the washed and it came out great too. So um, also you could do it on colored craft text, which would be very interesting, don't you think, to um, marble, you know, black and white design on top of like a bright, blue or pink um, or green, like a lime green craft text. I can see how that would be really vivid and interesting. So next up is Ruth Daly, which I think was in today's email, actually. So Ruth uses a combination. She does a couple of different things. She uses rubber stamps to create her images, and then she colors them in um, with markers. 
You can see the one on the right, which says explore. It's not colored in. It's just printed straight on there. She didn't say what ink she uses, but I would imagine that um, it's probably a waterproof ink because she's coloring it in. So maybe like a Stazon um, or one of the, uh, is it the pigment inks I think are waterproof? I think, don't quote me on that. Um, and she, another thing that I think is pretty interesting is she uses um, rub on letters, which is very cool. Um, they stay, they stay um, firmly on the craft text. She's using pre-washed, which you can see there, it's slightly um, textured. And she, for the closures, she uses um, hair ties, which are very cool. And she makes her own buttons from Shrinky Dink. Now you remember that Shrinky Dink stuff that we used to have when we were kids? I don't know how she does it, but she um, cuts out these little buttons and makes Shrinky Dink buttons. So um, that sort of coordinate with the colors of the journals. So. I thought that was really fun too. That really, um, that really caught my eye. So whatever rubber stamps you have lying around, you don't need to be able to draw. You can just, you know, stamp a design, color it in with markers, and um, you're good to go. And here's some other books um, by, um, oh, let me just by Ruth. I nearly said the wrong. I you said Lisa. I had Lisa in my head. Some more books by Ruth. Um, she used rubber stamping on the left by the looks of it and then colored it in with um, one of the metallic markers. And then if you look on the bottom right, she actually did some free motion sewing and created these circles and then colored, colored in those circles. So um, free motion sewing would also be a really cool thing to do on a craft text cover. Um, most of us have a sewing machine to hand and um, you don't need any special needle or anything. It just goes through. You may need to replace your needle more often because uh, it may um, dull more. Um, but yes, think about some stitching on the cover too. And if you don't have a sewing machine, do what Daria did and do hand stitching. So um, you can find Ruth on Instagram at Inspired Daily. Sharon has rink shrinky dink in the closet. There you go. So yeah, there are so many ideas here. So that is Ruth. We're almost at the end, folks. Sheila um, did some stenciling on hers. So she took a stencil and she actually used some um, crayons, some Maribou crayons. And let me just, so Maribou art crayons are a wax-based soft pastel, which she rubbed through a stencil. Doesn't that look cool? Um, and then because it's wax based, she sprayed it with just a regular fixative that you would use for pastels. Um, and she used it on a base of black, smooth black craft tech. So I imagine the smooth worked well um, with using a stencil. Um, but how cool is that? So think of all the stencils we have, because you know, you, I know that you have stencils. And if you don't have stencils, you can make your own. Um, out of a piece of sort of acetate or even a piece of Tyvek envelope, you can make yourself a stencil um, and then you stencil something interesting on the cover too. So um, that is what Sheila did. I love that book. It's so um, like graphic and bold. And Sheila is not on Instagram, but she does have a blog. Um, Mickey will um, link to a blog post that Sheila wrote about how she created this. And if you do a Google search for Idaho Beauty Quilts, that's where you will find Sheila. Let me see if there's any. Um... Beth says to use a leather needle of the sewing machine. Oh, that's a good idea. I like it. Um, yes, Kim says the pre-wash doesn't have a grain. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. It does not. So, yes, the washed, the, the washed <laughs> has no grain, but the um, smooth unwashed does have a grain for whatever reason. Um, Trisha Borg created this very cool faux leather look using Distress Oxide sprays. Um, she used a brown and a blue um, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide spray. I explain it right here. Um, and she sprayed it. She kind of moved the ink around. Um, blotted it up. She spritzed on some water, which you can kind of see from the kind of dots. That's where the water was. Then she dried it with a heat tool and then she repeated. So it's a very unpredictable um, type
type of me um, sort of procedure, but I bet you you get something interesting every single time. And I love that it was like blue and brown, um, and it was on a gray base, so a fairly neutral base. And then she, like I say, she spritzed, she moved it around, she blotted it, dried it, did it some more until she kind of got the look that she liked. And, and if you're interested in the book structure, it was um, by Kiala Givehand, and it was called The Elevated Clutch Book. So I love that. And look at that button. Oh, darn, we love a button. I'll just leave that up for a second so that if you want to make any notes, you can. Thank you. Mickey's popped Trisha's um, Instagram in the uh, comments for us. Bound for glory. Bound for glory handmade. And those distress oxide sprays um, you can get in um, big box craft stores. You can order them online. And you can just get a couple colors to see if you like them. Um, they're fun. I have a couple and they're fun. They're fun to play with. Um, oh, look at this. Oh, Shelly Barber um, used acrylic paints to create this gorgeous um, kind of floral pattern. So she um, outlined them in white paint, white acrylic paint, and then filled in the flowers and the bees and so forth. Um, I can tell you what she used. She said um, she used Windsor and Newton Galleria acrylic paints, though I'm sure whatever acrylic paints you have um, would work well. But I will say her um, colors, let me just go back. Her colors do look very rich. So I would say she probably used, well, it looked like she used a high quality acrylic paint with a lot of pigment in it um, to show up against this dark blue background. So she used Windsor and Newton Galleria acrylic paints. I'm sure you could use just other sort of well-known brand name acrylic paints if you wanted this bold look. She used the bead stitch, um, which I think we did on a Facebook Live a few months ago, um, and added buttons on the spine, which looks very cute. Very sort of in keeping with the uh, flowers on the front, kind of a whimsical look. And she used a... Um, pre-wash craft text, the um, indigo, so like a dark blue. But how cool is that? She used a button that stud for the closure as well, which goes straight through the um, the flat one of the flowers. So I really love this kind of bold look that um, Shelly got here. I think it's really, really fun. Um, so get out those acrylic paints, folks, and see what you can do. And you will find Shelly on um, Instagram at Blackmore underscore books if you want to check out more of her stuff or you want to reach out to her and let her know how much you loved her books, her book. That would be great. I think we have a couple more, but then I think we're pretty much close to the end. Yes, I've just got a couple more, um, which I don't really have details for, um, but are made by Handmade Book Club members and um, Michelle Painton or Panton. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, Michelle. Um, Michelle um, did used her embroidery machine to create this design on the front of her um, uh, craft textbook. So I think you can sort of program. I'm under, from my understanding, you can program embroidery machines um, with different designs, and that's what. And she did this through her craft text. So uh, that's pretty amazing. And then we have um, Anne Ingrid Hellick, who is a, another book club member. She used acrylic inks here to um, create a very colorful cover. So she's got yellow um, pre-washed in the background. Then she did some acrylic inks. It looks like she's got some water in there as well. Some kind of, what much is it like? Swirled it, swirled, swirled it around. That's a very technical term. And then once it was dry, she did some pen work on the top. So um, all sorts of pens work on these. Sharpie works well. Um, any kind of marker works really well. We've got the, um, the microns. They all work great. And this is on top of acrylic ink. And it looks like she used a white pen as well, white, some kind of white gel pen. I think, oh, and one last one. I don't have details on what paint Amy used, but Amy Atkinson um, did gel printing. So I'm guessing it was just straight acrylic paint, but she did gel printing on her cover. Looks like she used some really nice um, either bubble wrap or stencils or um, sequin scrim maybe to create the circular patterns. Um, but that looks very cool. So um, that is the final one from Amy. So um, 
I think that was more than 12, actually. Um, I, yeah, that is, oh, that's the end. I think that was more than 12 um, ideas <laughs> to cover because I just kept adding them on and adding them on. I found those last three this morning. I'm like, oh, I have to just include them because they're so good, even though I didn't have the... Um, oh, you're welcome, Michelle. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. Excellent. Um, Michelle, if you have an Instagram, um, pop it in the chat so folks can um, connect with you, especially if they've got questions about um, the machine embroidery. Let me ask, answer any questions uh, that you have. Let me see. Um, this is a good question from Heather. Hi, Heather. Does Craftex come pre-washed and unwashed or is, there a, is that a step the user does? No, you can purchase it washed. I packs of it pre-washed, um, Heather. So, um, and that's kind of the way to go, I think. You can certainly buy the smooth and then wash it yourself, but I think it's easier just to buy it pre-washed and pre-dyed as well in these nice bright colors. Good question. Um, yes, weren't they amazing? And holy cow, like there's a lot of really good ideas. So yes, um, thank you book club members for allowing us to um, use your work. And if I if I popped it on without getting your permission, I apologize. Uh, we just didn't have time to reach out to everyone. We'll be doing a blog post um, with a lot more about how these were created. Um, people very generously um, described their process in a lot of detail, which I couldn't really include today because otherwise we'd be here all afternoon. I hope you enjoyed these. I hope they were helpful. Um, they're certainly helpful to me and now I'm kind of inspired to go and um, put things on the front of my covers at least a little drawing or a little paint or something and um, please share your creations in if you're in the book club in the handmade book club Facebook group but if you're not in the book club that's okay we have a Facebook just for you as well crafting handmade books um, we can probably pop a link in in the comments and please feel free to um, share your creations there um, the book club will be opening up again in um, November. So um, if you want to put your name on the wait list, um, head on over to there and you can pop your name on the wait list um, because we would love to have you because we're an awfully nice bunch of folks over there. And you can tell that they're an extremely creative bunch and you'll learn a lot from them. So um, thank you for being here on this Thursday morning, my friends. I appreciate it.